In this video, you will learn how to whiten and brighten raw paper pulp with both chlorine and non-chlorine bleaches. These bleaching materials are readily available and inexpensive and can be obtained at your local supermarket. Stay with me. When rinsing the raw pulp, ensure that you don't rinse out too much of the sodium hydroxide solution. This will ensure that the pH remains in the 9.5 and over range to assist with the bleaching process. Bleaching is the chemical process applied to cellulosic material to destroy chromophores. This increases brightness and reduces color. It results in either the destruction or the modification of the lignin found in plant fiber. Chemically pulp unbleached fibers like ornamental banana pulp have 5% or more lignin and are brown. This contains condensed lignin with extended conjugated structures. And if you don't know what conjugated structures means, that means that it has double bonds in it. Lignin has double bonds in it and aromatic groups. To remove color, electrophilic agents such as oxygen, ozone, sodium hypochlorite, chlorine dioxide, and chlorine can oxidize them, interrupting conjugation and color. These break the lignin molecules, making them soluble and easy to extract. Chlorine bleach, or what is called sodium hypochlorite, NaOCl, produces hypochlorite ions, as you can see on this chart, the OCl minus ions, when placed in water. And these ions attack and degrade lignin in the pulp and preserve cellulose at the same time. A pH between 9.5 and 11 encourages the formation, as you can see here, anything to the right of that encourages the formation of hypochlorite ions, which increases bleaching without cellulosic degradation. If the pH, of course, falls in this range between six and seven, it produces hypochlorous acid, HOCl, and that attacks and degrades cellulose. If the pH is less than three, and that, that would take me over to this side, if the pH is less than three, then the tendency is to um, produce chlorine gas, which is quite toxic, and we want to avoid that. The ideal pH for both chlorine bleach, which is sodium hypochlorite, um, is 9.5 to 11, and that encourages the formation of hypochlorite ions, which increases bleaching without cellulosic degradation. The same thing is true for non-chlorine bleaches like sodium percarbonate, which we will do later on in this video, and that also functions well in the same pH range between 9.5 and 11. The objective of bleaching is to remove as much lignin or the color from the lignin um, without degrading the cellulose. So sodium hypochlorite actually degrades the lignin, the lignin per hydroxyl ions which come from sodium percarbonate, they actually um, remove chromophores which removes the color. So both act in different ways, both oxidizing the materials. Shelf-bought chlorine bleach needs to be diluted to the percentage that you desire. The one on the left has a percentage of 3.5 and the other one, chloride bleach, has a percentage of 5.25. Note this when you're selecting the bleach on the shelf. What you're going to do is to measure out a calculated amount of bleach and in this case you will see the measurements on the screen and then you are going to put that into a container and fill it up to the total volume that is calculated with the amount of bleach that's necessary. 
In this case, we're using 500 milliliter. So you simply multiply the percentage that you desire, which is in this case 2% times the volume that you desire, which is 500 and divide that by the percentage on the bottle. That would give you how much bleach you need to start with and the total volume you need to make it up to. To ensure that the bleach works effectively, you need to use at least a 12% consistency. I've worked this out to be about 10 grams of pulp for every 85 milliliters of solution. That means you weigh it out and then you mix it in with the solution. Once you have mixed the material, it is now necessary to improve on the process and the reaction of bleaching by blending the materials in a blender. This increases surface area by reducing the size of the particles in the solution, thus improving the bleaching process. You can already see the change in the color of the material that has been mixed with the bleach and this reaction will take quite a while to occur but it's necessary for you to pay attention to it and stir periodically to allow the materials to mix thoroughly because the bleach is actually going to react completely with the material and it will be used up in the process. Just remember that bleaching is actually a reaction with the lignin in the fiber that degrades them and therefore reduces the color in the material. Heating the bleach and not boiling it is also a part of the reaction. This helps to speed up the chemical reaction and to allow the bleach chemicals, the bleaching chemicals to have their effect. Now, heating it doesn't mean that you're going to cause it to reach a boil. You're just going to ensure that the temperature stays between 35 degrees and 70 degrees Celsius and that will help to speed up the reaction and to increase the effectiveness of the bleaching process. The entire process should take between 30 and 90 minutes. The longer you let it sit and the longer you let it react is the more it brightens and whitens as color is removed and as lignin is degraded. So give it some time and stir periodically to encourage the reaction to move in the right direction. Once the bleaching time is up, it is necessary to blend the materials again, this time toward a more consistent pulp before you rinse the fibers. The purpose of this final rinsing is to remove excess bleach that is left in the material, bleach that has not reacted with the fibers and that would prevent any yellowing of the pulp or the paper in the future. So make sure that you spend some time rinsing all excess bleach out of the material before you use it to make paper. Once you have finished rinsing the pulp and you have removed as much bleach as possible, hopefully all, the next step is to squeeze out the remaining water and then to put that pulp up for use in paper making. As you can see, it's a very simple and straightforward process. I hope you try it out. Remember that sodium hypochlorite or chlorine bleach degrades the lignin in the pulp and eventually will have an impact on paper strength. An alternative to chlorine bleach is non-chlorine bleach. This comes in the form of sodium percarbonate. For 
non-chlorine bleaches will be using Oxy Master and Oxy Clean. In order to make the solution, you start by measuring out mass, and in this case, that is 30 grams of the material. Since we are making a 500 milliliter solution, we're going to place the 30 grams in the container and then fill with hot water until we get to 500 ml giving us 500 milliliters of solution then place this mass in a container and then fill the container with the solvent in this case water until it reaches the 500 milliliter mark Proceed to add the pulp, a weighed amount of the pulp to this mixture in order to get the reaction started. And we use the same procedure as before, 10 grams for every 85 milliliters of solution. Once you have added the pulp and started the bleaching reaction, it is necessary once again to blend these materials to increase the surface area and to enhance the bleaching process. Be careful when blending hot liquids they tend to be a bit explosive in the blender. So take your time with this phase of the process. Carefully blend the materials to a pulpy consistency and allow to stand, stirring occasionally for 30 to 90 minutes. And you can reheat the mixture periodically as you go along the way to ensure that you encourage the reaction of the perhydroxyl ion with the chromophores in the solution. In the bleaching process, paying attention to the details helps to enhance the outcomes. You can see now that the reaction has started to show changes in terms of the pulp color. Continue stirring periodically as you time it and heat occasionally to ensure that the temperature is maintained between 35 and 70 degrees Celsius. Remember, you need about 30 to 90 minutes for the reaction to be complete. The longer you wait, the more likely you are to experience better, brighter and whiter results. Be patient with this part of the procedure. Once the reaction is complete and the time is up, it is time for you to take the solution and to blend it to reduce it once again to a pulpy consistency. The pulp is now ready to be thoroughly rinsed to remove perhydroxyl ions so that they won't affect the paper in the end. In this final step, it is necessary to spend quite a bit of time rinsing the pulp. If you don't spend enough time rinsing the pulp, you may end up with some residues of perhydroxyl ion in the pulp, which may cause some amount of yellowing later on in the paper. So give it due diligence and spend quality time rinsing the pulp with enough water and you can feel the material in the end to ensure that it has lost its slipperiness. So spend some time with this final phase of the process. The results are quite clear, as you can see. Nice, brighter colors. And if you want them to be brighter, you need to spend some more time in the process of bleaching. I would really like to thank you for watching, and I hope you have learned how to bleach pulp with both chlorine and non-chlorine bleaches. Please subscribe to my channel and look out for the new video coming up on how to make a mold and deco and use it to make paper.